everyone. Welcome to First Chapter Fridays. My name is Miss Virginia and I work here at the Main Library in Alameda. And uh, today I'm going to be sharing a book with you. It's called Eddie Whatever. And this is by Lois Ruby. And it's a really fun book. It's uh, There's humor in it, but a little bit of mystery and also some very quirky characters. So I hope you'll get a chance to read it. Check it out from the library if you don't if you'd like to use it as an ebook, it is available via Hoopla um, through our ebook system. Um, and uh, either way, I hope you get a chance to read it. It's a fun, fun book. All right, let me read you the jacket because I, that's what I like to do. It gives you a, a whole gist of what the story's about. So Eddie is preparing for his bar mitzvah in this book. Um, and he has to do community service. With his bar mitzvah on the horizon, 13-year-old Eddie needs to do a community service project and he needs to start yesterday. Against his better judgment, he, he ends up with a volunteering gig at Silver Brook Pavilion, a retirement home where the elderly residents call him Eddie whatever. So they won't have to remember his last name. Eddie expects his time at Silver Brook to drag but at least his friend Tessa will be there to help keep him company, if he can manage to avoid embarrassing himself in front of her. Soon, though, the seniors upend all of Eddie's assumptions. Their lives are full of excitement with a dramatic courtship unfolding, long hidden secrets emerging, rumors of a vengeful ghost running rampant, and a thief on the loose. When suspicion for the theft thefts falls on Eddie, he has to team up with the seniors and Tessa to clear his name and solve the mysteries of Silverbrook. So there's a little mystery here. Eddie, whatever. Chapter one. How does mom find it crumpled in the bottom of my backpack where it's been sitting for the past three weeks? She pulls the letter out and irons it with her palm. Did you read this, Eddie? She says. It's all the bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah students saying that they have to choose a mitzvah project. What a terrific idea. I grab my baseball pants out of the dryer and shake out the wrinkles. You can hardly see the grass stains, though. The hole in the seat could be humiliating after another couple of slides into second. The jersey thuds to my knees, number five, Hank Greenberg's number, because back in the day, the 30s and 40s, my hero was called the Hebrew Hammer. Ugh, do I have to? Can't you just call R Rabbi Keffler and tell him I'm Edward Benjamin Lewin? Trouble when she calls me by my full name. You'd better get on the board with this quickly because you need to put in a minimum of 25 hours over the next three months. 25 hours? When? I have regular school and Hebrew school, B'nai Mitzvah classes on Tuesday. Baseball on Thursday, robotics club on Wednesday morning, synagogue Saturday morning. Tell me, when can I fit in a mitzvah project? Monday and Wednesday afternoons, and I've got just the place. I saw in the paper the other day that Silver Brook Pavilion welcomes volunteers. I've heard of it. Tessa Schwartz in my Nye Mitzvah class decided to volunteer there, but quit practically immediately. What a recommendation. Mom's already grabbed her tablet and pulled up the website for the retirement home. Silverbrook is a continuum of care facility for senior citizens, lovable old folks who are thrilled to have young people around. See? She shows me the home page on the tablet screen. Silverbrook Pavilion, where old is the new young. Are they kidding? I picture shrunken crones licking lollipops or blowing pinwheels, baldies playing hit and catch with a Nerf bat and ball, rock, paper, scissors to decide who bats first. And you can walk there, perfect. You can start next Monday. We'll call the administrator to set it up. Aw, oh, mom, give me a break. Instead, she gives me her famous evil eye while looking up the number. My mom, when she decides something, an army of fire ants under her bare feet wouldn't change her mind. After school on Monday, mom marches me to the old folks place and deserts me at the main entrance. 
I think about making one last bid for freedom, but she's got that look on her face. So I whoosh in my breath and blow out a gust of hot air as I tromp up the wheelchair ramp to my doom. Despite Silverbrook's slogan, there's nothing young about the wrinkly people lining the building's front porch. They make Grandma and Grandpa in Cincinnati look like high schoolers. Some lean their chins on canes, others look stuck in wheelchairs or rocking chairs, or they're backed into their walker seats. All of them look like they're watching a silent movie playing in midair, at least until every pair of eyes rotates towards me. One woman points at me with a skinny, unlit cigar stuck in a plastic holder. Who's this, she croaks. I mean, she doesn't croak as in die on the spot, but she sounds like a bullfrog and her brown face is as worn and cracked as dad's briefcase. The fancy gold watch that's slid down from her wrist to her elbow catches a glint of sunlight and almost blinds me. The lady next to her pulls thick glasses down from her halo of cloud white hair and googly eyes me. Could be Mrs. Goldfarb's youngest great grandson. See the way his, way his hair hangs in his eyes? I sweep my hand across my forehead, but my squirrel colored hair just flops right back. Two guys who've been smoking cigars, blowing fruity puffs into each other's faces, turn to stare. One of them hooks his cane around my arm and reels me in. Afternoon, Sonny, what you up to? Leave him alone, Herman, the other cigar man barks. Mind your P's and Q's, Maury, cigar smoke blasts out of Herman. I'm Eddie Lewin, I say, the new volunteer. Herman Stark, says the cigar man who lassoed me with his cane. And this nudnik here is Maury Glosser. I'm capable of introducing myself, you old flea bag. Some of us still have our memories intact, you know. Don't mind them, says the cigar lady with the elegant watch. I'm Ethelyn Callahan, and this is Rosa Dorian. Nice to meet you all. When I take a step back to extricate my arm from the crook of Mr. Stark's cane, the automatic door swooshes open. Inside, two women in wheelchairs guard the lobby like the fierce stone lions I saw last summer at New York's public library. One lady has red knee socks pulled up on her skinny red skinny legs. No old lady shoes. Her straight straw-like hair hangs to her shoulders, the color of a bruised lemon. The other lady, who shrunk down to the size of a fifth grader, is covered in purple, head to toe, including purple blotches on her hands. Her smile flashes off and on, reminding me of a changing stoplight. With a face twisted into a frown, the lady with the red socks leans toward me. Welcome to Sil Welcome to Silverbrook. Welcome. Her accent's barely noticeable. But there, but there. Call me Lena. Everyone calls me Lena except her. I'm a twin, you know. How would I know? And who is her? My name's Eddie. Uh, Whatever, I'll forget it in two minutes. How long's your sentence with us? Great start. Mom promised Silverbrook an hour every Monday and Wednesday. In an hour, you can play four innings or three video games, but here, only 55 minutes to go. I'm here till June, Lena says. You must be one of the mitzvah project kids. Yeah, I say with a sigh. My bar mitzvah is barely three months off. The whole family's flying into Oklahoma City for it. But I'll be a no-show unless I do my 25 hours of community service. Believe me, I'd rather be messing around with the robot that my squad's building at school or hitting baseballs out of the park like that ever happens. Lena leans forward, stretching a long neck and drills her milky blue eyes into me. Baseball, huh? Yep, proud to play for the Oak Ridge Oilers, which is famous statewide for being second from the bottom of all the Oklahoma middle schools. At least we aren't the bottom feeders. Hmm, you might be an um, improvement over the usual boring kids we get in here. In her next breath, she ruins the whole thing. 
You're short for 13. Tuck in your shirt, kid. I jam my knee-length Oilers jersey into my jeans so it looks like a blown-out rubber tire around my middle. Don't mind me, she adds. I'm a cranky old witch. Oh, I bet you're not as cranky as you think. I said it to be polite, but I believe her. Oh, says the purple lady. She's as bitter as beet horseradish. And it's best not to cross me. Lena puts up her gnarled dukes and starts punching the air. No one would believe that I'm air sparring with an old lady in a wheelchair. Thankfully, she lowers her fists before I accidentally sock her in the jaw. I should warn you, Eddie, whatever. The other lady makes a face. Before I can ask, warn me about what, Lena says. The place is haunted. Oh, well, I'm just going to stop there. Chapter one was pretty long, so I hope that you'll get a chance to check out Eddie Whatever by Lois Ruby and find out if Silverbrook really is haunted and who is stealing things and whether or not Eddie makes it to his bar mitzvah by doing all his community service hours. So you can come to the library and check it out, but remember it's also available as an ebook on Hoopla. So sign up for Hoopla today and get you can read all kinds of great books uh, through Hoopla or Libby, which is our other ebook resource. So I hope you'll check it out. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time on First Chapter Fridays. Bye!